This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Italeri's premium T3476 and F27 Maritime Patroller, AMT's 97 Ford F150, Academy's Korean Carrier, MPC's Little Hustler, and AFV Club's Churchill Bridge Layer. New product rundown brought to you by Hobby Zone USA, your source for hobby storage solutions, hard to find hobby tools, and aftermarket modeling needs. Welcome to New Product Rundown, Fine Scale Modeler's twice monthly video where we crack open the latest kits. I'm Kendra Bell. I'm Aaron Skinner. Let's plow ahead with Italeri's 135th scale T3476 model 1943 early version. This kit is not Italeri's reboxing of the 1993 vintage Svezda kit. Rather, it shares parts with the company's T3485, first released in 2018, but omits much of the interior detail featured in its predecessor. The lower hull has detail underneath and openings for the Christie style suspension arms. The running gear comprises road wheel arms that attach to the hull and springs, which fit inside box towers with detailed outer faces since they face inside. In addition to the original kit's rubber tired half spider road wheels, this kit includes all metal wheels. The drive sprockets are designed to be movable with keepers inside the final drive housings. The kit provides Lincoln length tracks with an upper run that undulates over the road wheels or decently molded vinyl tracks that can be assembled with super glue. The upper hull builds from a large single part with integral fenders, open hatches, and molded rolled steel texture. There are separate panels for the lower and upper rear panels, as well as the glasses and turret race. All of the engine and driver's hatches are separate and poseable. Also poseable are the louvers inside the side and rear intakes. The latter gets a two-part photo etched screen. The brass fret also provides straps for the track grousers and the rim for the rear hull if you leave the entire rear plate open. In addition to the aforementioned grousers, external hull details include front and rear fenders, fuel tanks and their supports, exhausts, toolboxes, and a rounded forward hull. While there isn't much to see in the fighting compartment, the rear has a detailed transmission with molded axles, brakes, with supports, and other equipment. On the bulkhead between the transmission and the engine are a flywheel and air cleaners. The engine itself is represented by a detailed plate rather than the complete power plant. That's all that will be visible anyway if you pose the hatch open. The hexagonal turret and its bottom are marked with rough cast texture. The top includes posable hatches to reveal the breech of the main gun. It fits into a movable mantlet in the turret front. The barrel is provided in plastic and turned metal. Decals supply markings for six tanks. One from the Soviet 106th Tank Brigade in the Moscow Military District in fall 1942. Another from an unknown unit in a training area in spring 1943. A T-34 in worn winter camo on the Stalingrad front in February 1943. A 39th Guard Brigade tank in two-tone camo on the Leningrad front in summer 1943. A flamethrower-equipped OT-34 on the Kursk front in summer 1943. And a captured tank in German markings. Inside the box, this kit looks impressive with some nice detail and options. Also from Italy is this 172nd scale Fokker F-27 in maritime patrol markings. The tooling here originated from an Eschi kit in 1991. Despite its age, it features sharply recessed panel lines on airframe parts like the fuselage, wings, stabilizers, and engine nacelles. The last have separate one-piece fronts for the props. Inside the cockpit has seats and control yokes and an instrument panel. In place of the F-27's typical airliner cabin, this aircraft has surveillance equipment, seats, and a galley and bathroom. Underwing tanks and a radar dome and antennas finish the aircraft's military uniform. All of the doors are separate if you want to pose them open to show the interior. Clear parts supply the windshield insert and strips of cabin windows. Stunning cartograph decals provide markings for three F-27s. Two variations of aircraft from the Spanish Air Force on the Canary Islands and a Netherlands Air Force patroller in the Antilles. The F-27 is another welcome Eschi re-release from Italy. From AMT, here's a 125th scale 97 Ford F-150 4x4 pickup. This was the first year of the redesigned rounded Ford pickup. The tooling originated in the mid-1990s as a Lindbergh kit and it looks good in the box. The cab is mostly a single part with good door outlines and some engine bay details. The hood and radiator and headlight clip are separate. The V8 engine is well represented with the block, heads, sump, transmission, fan belts and pulleys, air intake, hoses and more. 
A detailed firewall and radiator finish the engine compartment. The one-piece frame gets the front and rear axles, front suspension and steering, rear leaf springs, transfer case, drive shafts, exhaust, and fuel tank with skid plate. Brakes and the axles, to which are added two-part wheels and Goodyear branded tires. The interior tub gets a pair of bucket seats, shifters, a dash with pedals, and steering wheel. The inner bed is a single part that gets clad with flare sides and a two-part tailgate. An optional roll bar with spotlights is included for the bed. Chrome-plated parts supply bumpers, grille, headlight bezels, mirrors, and a couple of engine parts. The windscreen and backlight are separate. The headlight indicator and spotlight lenses are here too. The taillights are provided in clear red plastic. The decals give badges, a variety of Ford logos, stripes and body graphics, instruments for the dash, and Michigan and Indiana license plates. Ford's F-150 has always been popular and this kit looks like it will build into a nice replica. Next, something different from Academy, a 1700 scale Korean amphibious carrier, ROKS Dokto. One of two helicopter carriers in the South Korean Navy, the Dokto was commissioned in 2007 and can carry up to 15 helicopters, two LCAC landing craft, 200 vehicles, and 720 Marines. Part of Academy's MCP line of kits, the Dokto is molded in color and designed to be push fitted together. Despite that, details are finely molded. The deck features tie downs and elevators. The island is mostly a single part. Other details include the mast, inserts for boats, anchors and antennas, radar dishes and smokestacks, and radomes. Three helicopters are provided for the deck, one each, Sea Lynx, UH-60, and KUH-1 Sarayan. A stand is included. Decal supply markings for the choppers, striping for the deck, and hull names and numbers. This neat little kit should be easy enough for anyone to put together and provide a great basis for super detailing. From MPC, here's a slightly freshened blast from the past, a 125th scale Lil Hustler Datsun pickup. Variations of this truck have been on MPC's catalog since the mid-1970s, including this drag truck. The cab shows good door, handle, and vent detail. Inside the tub gets a pair of racing buckets, roll bar, and dash. Each of the windows is a separate piece. Under the tilting front end is a 400 cubic inch Chevy V8, with chrome heads, sump, and blower. It and the radiator fit into the one-piece frame along with the rear axle and front suspension, chrome wheelie bars, and more. The wheels feature pad-printed tires. The bed builds from a floor, sides, branded tailgate, and tonneau cover. The decals supply gauges for the instrument cluster, the body graphics, and contingencies. Fans of gassers and drag racing should welcome this tasty reissue. Finally, here's AFV Club's 135th scale Churchill Mark IV AVRE with small box girder bridge. The Allies deployed these vehicles during the Normandy invasion. AFV Club's Churchill has been around since 2008 and remains one of the best kits of the British tank. The complicated suspension comprises multiple road wheels on spring-mounted arms. Those mount to the multi-part sponsons that are wrapped with nicely molded multiple part individual link tracks. The hull goes together from several plates, all featuring fine panel lines, rivets, and raised reinforcing on the fenders. Waiting gear is included if you're building a D-Day vehicle. The turret features fine casting texture, and the AVRE's 29mm spigot mortar is nicely replicated with the breech inside and a slide molded tube outside. The winching equipment for the bridge includes several pulleys and cogs that fit inside a metal frame box on the engine deck. Thread is applied to rig the elevation system. The bridge, which will end up being nearly a foot long, has multi-part box girders linked by braces and solid ends and topped by the treadways. Decals give markings for five vehicles, all in overall bronze green, from several assault regiments within the 79th Armored Division. This is another cool version of the Churchill. AFV Club is getting some serious mileage out of that tooling. Look for the reviews of the Ford, Datsun, and Ducto on finescale.com. We're constantly updating the website with show galleries, two or three new reviews a week, industry and hobby news, how-to videos and stories, and so much more. And while you're there, nip on over to the thekalmbachhobbystore.com for books, gifts, and tools, including this exciting selection from Green Stuff World. Thanks for watching, I'm Aaron. I'm Kendra, I'm never gonna make you cry. Front and rear fender, f 
uh, Fendals? <laughs> Fendals. I made up a word. <laughs> the Fendals are a villain in the Doctor Who universe. Oh. Detailed transmitter. Transmitter. <laughs> That's all you'll be able to visit the bleep 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 Count shall be three. Five is right out. That tooling. Sorry. <laughs> I already forgot. That it was my line next to what I was going to say. There's Kendra, deer in a headlight.